Well, the Carnegie acquired the entire uh, collection of Teeny Harris, who was a very important uh, Pittsburgh-based photographer who shot a lot of really important uh, photographs in and around Pittsburgh, a lot of it for the Pittsburgh Courier, and included as kind of a small addendum to this collection of photographs, which number, I guess, in the 80,000s or something like that, we've got 13 reels of film. A lot of it, if we're able to preserve them and have them transferred onto video, we can actually make these visible to the public. First of all, Teeny Harris was a great photographer, and his record of African-American life in Pittsburgh is incredibly intimate, it's complete, um, and it shows a side of African-American life that you don't find in many, many other photographs of the period. Uh, footage, um, live footage by African-Americans from this period of the 1930s and 1940s is very, very rare. In the film, what you see is his love of, of sports and his love of humanity, and that's what you're seeing in these pictures. A lot of these are for publication, but a vast majority of them are also just something he saw because he had an eye. He just He wanted the image, so he took it. And I think that's what the film shows is he was interested in that. There's a very beautiful and mysterious sequence of people standing on a stone bridge uh, watching a huge cloud rise up behind them or around them. And we don't know if it's a fire, if it's a storm. Uh, I've only seen a short part of the whole footage, and so the whole question of what is this mysterious thing about um, something I want to see resolved. It's a, just a very, very beautiful sequence of images, regardless of what the story is. These prints are the only copies in existence, as far as we know. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to send these to a film lab, where the prints will be used to create duplicate negatives. And then from those negatives, we will create a new positive print. And we'll also have a video transfer made so that we can show this more easily on DVD and uh, eventually on digital media. There's a pretty good chance that the film is in danger of being completely uh, unusable. When it begins to degrade, it lets off an acid vinegar smell, hence the name vinegar syndrome. As vinegar syndrome gets worse and worse, the film will begin to warp or crack. It'll become brittle and less flexible. It's going to keep getting worse until eventually it's going to stop being something that we can transfer. As you can see, we've got some kind of bad splices here and more blown sprockets. All that needs to be repaired before we can do any reprinting. It's not um, a terribly expensive project given the scope of the material. Uh, well, to be... To be, blunt. to be perfectly blunt, we need about $20,000 to make the images on Teeny's original 16 millimeter films available to the public. It comes down to about $5 a foot, I think. Uh, about the same as the subway hoagie. Um, and much more interesting. <laughs>